Yeah, oh, well, it feels the same as yesterday and hopefully the same as tomorrow. So, yeah, I've been very fortunate enough to be able to you know, play a reasonable amount of footy, um, and especially for a club like West Coast, uh, I feel pretty happy to be able to do that. Um, especially coming into the club from interstate, you, you tend to not know a lot about um, clubs outside your area. So um, to come in and learn about the history and then the players here and obviously have some um, very good guidance from a lot of people has um, really helped me to be where I am today. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's a bit of luck. It's a bit of the way you prepare. Um, I've been fortunate enough about to do most of, most of training, so I think that really helps. That that um, you know, I think that holds you in good stead, you know, throughout the season. But if you can do, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight years in a row, I really think that helps that durability. So probably have a bit bit of a bigger frame. I was talking to um, someone the other day. Like a lot of players now can run flat out and you know, look a bit like a Ferrari. They tend to be a bit more on the edge. So I'm just a bit more. You know, a bit more tractor-like, so um, I think that you know, that that helps. But it's just about how you look after yourself and how you prepare, and um, you need a bit of luck in there as well. Yeah, you could probably tie, I suppose, to modern football. Do you think they still recruit you now? Have you ever, uh, in the draft? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You'd have to ask um, some of the recruiters. And that's the best thing about football is um, a anyone can play. So the game is about skill. Um, but yes, yes, you need to be able to run these days. But you know, you've seen in the last, well, ever since I've been here, but and it'll continue to be so. Yeah, small blokes, tall blokes, you know, blokes that run fast, blokes that read the game. That's why football is such a great game to play. Do you have, what was your sort of longest memory maybe of when you started? Do you remember your first training session when you got here or who you first spoke to? Or what's um, your longest West Coast memory? Yeah, well, I can remember, I'm pretty sure we were training at Claremont Oval, so the old Claremont Oval. Um, and yeah, got to f flew over from Adelaide and got introduced to the group there. So that was pretty, um, pretty intimidating. But uh, that was probably my first memory of getting introduced to the group. And then I think we trained a couple of days later. Um, and it's just about the, just the standards that they had in the players. Um, that was probably the first memory. It's been changing those standards from when you first came to now. Well, I don't think there's been a lot of a lot of change in standard because the main thing is you need to work hard and. Um, keep training to get the best out of yourself. Um, the way players go about it and I suppose the way that um, sports science has is, is changed slightly, but the best players are always blokes that can go and train, try to always improve, um, self-reliant. So that's the main thing I think that's always been around and will always continue to be around. Now it's just a probably a little bit more um, individualised. So back then I think it was more, this is what we're going to do as a group. Now it's a lot more individualised to you know, uh, where you are in your career, um, what type of player you are, what type of things you need. You probably had your best season last year, which is pretty rare, I suppose, for someone at your age. Yeah. What was the secret to that? And do you feel like maybe it's partly the game's changed that suits you, or uh, something you've done? How did, how did that happen? Yeah, well, I think the more you get to play football, the more experiences you get, and the more you understand about the game, um, how you best prepare yourself, how you're working with the team. Um, and you probably get a bit more, like a bit more relaxed. You still take the game seriously and want to win, but you probably be a bit more relaxed because you know what the game's going to um, throw at you. So it's a combination of that. We're very lucky to play, get to play on a good team as well. Um, that's always that's always the thing that I've been um, big on is playing good team football and have a good team around you, and that makes everyone look you know look 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 a bit better than what they really are. So um, I've been fortunate enough to have that. And um, last year had a good year, but. Want to keep continuing trying to get better, and um, that that'll be no different this week. Brad, I know you've captained such a big club, and um, all that you've always been like you don't crave the attention. How's, how's it all sat with you yeah. over the years? Well, uh, it's I've always been brought up that it's about the team and um, it's about trying to get the best out of people. It's not about not about yourself, and that's something that um, just my personality, just the way it's been. So. I spoke about it before. Football is a great game, and I have a lot of different personalities. Some people really like the limelight, and others don't. And that's that's just what you need to work with. I, I've just wanted to, um, I suppose, put it as simply as possible. It's just I've just wanted to be able to contribute and play my bit for the team. And um, sometimes you get accolades, sometimes you don't. But that doesn't really change how I want to go about things or how I want to do things. Um, you know, there's a lot of. Um, uh, opinions and, and media now in the game and that can, as a younger fellow, that's pretty hard now trying to learn you know, what you're about and how you best play your football and 
you can get um, pulled from pillar to post a little bit, trying to find out who you are. So it's, it's, I've always been pretty comfortable with how I want to go about football. Um, and as long as you know your family and friends know who you are, that's that's pretty much what matters. So in that regard, you've got there's a couple of other milestones on Saturday and the flag on Saturday. Yeah, that'll help. Yeah, that'll certainly help. Um, you know, you know, Chris Maston, 200, um, it's a fantastic effort. You know, he's had a couple ups and downs as well, and he's had to learn learn how to get the best out of himself from football. So I've been really proud with how he's gone about it now, and um, he's matured really well as a, as a person, and now got a great family and contributes really well um, to us as a team. And then obviously, um, you know, well, looks like Josh is going to be able to play. Um, so for him to be able to play 200 games for the club is another big thing, because all both those players have had a big input about how we are as a club now with, you know, how we, how we go about our training, how we play, and the standards that we have. Well, he's, he was great to make 350, but no one's made it to 300. You signed on for next year already. Did, yeah. Did you see yourself maybe yeah. being the first well, one to crack that, or just to go past Coxie, mate? Yeah, go past Coxie. So I uh, get along real well with Coxie and um, Glassy. They were two players that really um, helped, I suppose, mould me about my football and a couple of my views about how, how to go. So I was really lucky to have those two players. But um, you know, as for the game milestone, it's you know those things are always nice. But I think if, if I'm just at this stage in my career where if I play one more game or I play a hundred more games, I'd be I'd be really excited. Um, and that's just what I want to keep trying to do. Is you know you get a bit older, you know it's towards the end. So it's just about trying to make make the most of it. And whether that's you know, one game or a hundred games, so be it. I was just looking at Chris too. Obviously, going towards a huge milestone. But is it disappointing with all everything that's come out of this land, Ryan? Yeah, well, there's been a lot of talk about that. Well, for a long time, but especially probably like the last two months. Um, so it's something that, as a club and as fans and players, that we don't tolerate. But unfortunately, it still keeps happening. So we keep trying to help with education. Um, you saw the piece that we did as a playing group. Um, when was that yesterday? So it's just something that goes on. But as I said, we just keep trying to educate um, and just say that's not, you know, it's not on pretty much. Who wrote that video? Who wanted to do it? Was it the players or? Well, it's like a mi so a mixture. So a little bit of the club, um, you know, we're always going to support our players, but especially Liam in that situation. And then um, we got Phil Knuckle as well, who um, was pretty strong on trying to get something out there. So it was a lot of um, people inside the club, but it was a, it was more a, a whole, I suppose, group thing that we agreed on. It's galvanised a lot of people and a lot of your players on social media, Shannon. How much do you expect it to galvanise the group on Saturday? Yeah, well, well, I think we're always been pretty um, galvanised when we speak about being united and getting along well, and that's what you need to be able to do to be a good group. So, you know, flip side with that doesn't mean everyone's best mates, but you get along well because you want to do your best for your teammate. And um, I think that's been a, a great improvement for us, and that's why we played so well last year because we understood each other. So this week, you know, last week was disappointing, but this week I don't think it would be any different. It would just be that you just need to make sure that our intent's up, um, playing for each other, you know, blocking, understanding what's going on. If we do that this week, um, I think, you know, put us in a good, good place to win. I know you're probably not a big numbers man, but six and five without JK last year, and I think 13 and one with him. Oh yeah, yeah. How, how important do you think you'll be this week coming back after a loss? Yeah, well, you know, Josh is an excellent player. So every time you have a good player out of your team, it can be a little bit hard to cover at times. He's just a focal point, um, understands where the ball's going, can draw defenders to him, but also brings everyone else into the game. So a player like that's, it's yeah, it's pretty good to have in your team. What did you make of the six 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 for a defender as a quarterback? What did you? Yeah, uh, well. It's still ongoing a little bit, but I think basically there is a bit more space. A um, bit, of, bit of back to how it was played 30, 40 years ago. So it's just an ongoing thing to, to adapt. So the AFL obviously didn't want that, um, like the scrimmage and so many people close together. And that's what we've had, had for probably the last six, eight years. That's what you've been used to. So it's now it's just getting used to that space and being able to work together again. That's, that's, that's what's been happening. Yeah, well, you always got to keep learning and keep getting better because um, if you do something well, teams try to um, uh, well change the way you play. So you've got to adapt again. So all those, those, those two players, but us as the backliners, had to adapt over the years as a team. So 
that teams don't really kick long down the line anymore. It used to be just that. Everyone wants to take the game on. Um, that's what seems to be the case. So now it's just about making sure you can still defend as a defender. And that's always been the number one you know, rule of defender is make sure you can defend. But those two players and everyone on the back line can defend one-on-one. -on -one, and then if you can, still try to read the play. Well, basically, if uh, you don't show much intent, um, you can get shown up, and that's what it was. So, I think we're just a little bit off, a bit slow with um, you know both getting into um, attacking mode and then defending, and then they probably just play the conditions a lot better. So, it is pretty simple. But if you don't if you don't win the ball and um, it don't work together, it can be a bit of an awakening. awakening. Oh, it's something you can fix. Yeah, it's something we fix, no problem. Um, you know, footy's always been, yes, you need to have skill, but it's just about how you view the game and that type of attitude. It doesn't mean you win, but it always puts yourself in good stead. So um, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to um, change that this week. Uh, Buckley was uh, getting angry at the players for their intent because of Jason GPS data. Just looking at your okay. data, was that in, in at all in the Eagles? Was the, the numbers uh, dropped a bit? Um, I actually haven't, I don't, I haven't looked at it, so I'm not sure. But um, sometimes those numbers can can change. You can run a lot when you're defending. Um, I think it's more just that around in that contest, just the one-on-one -on -one stuff. I just think we just just didn't quite get it right, just a little bit fumbly, and then all of a sudden you have, you have to turn around and defend. Um, Josh Kelly should be back with Jamie Lewis. Jamie was amazing on the weekend, so yep. how did Hutch go to this well, that, well, Simo and the coaching group will have a look at that um, and probably be to see how Hutch best suits who he thinks as well. So they've got a very good playing list. I know they've lost some players in the last couple of years, but they've always been pretty even over the midfield. And then those, their forwards have been playing some pretty good footy. So um, it'll probably be who's in the best form, I'd say. Uh, yeah, well, they, they always have been. Um, I understand about the talent that they've got and they, they've had, what, six years of playing together now. So they understand how the game is and how each other goes. So they, they've never been, well, you know, early days, but um, apart from that, they've always been tough, tough to play against. So you're more focused on yourself? Um, well, you, well, you need to understand what the opposition are, are going to do and how they're going to play. And then you need to go, well, what best suits us? So, you know, you can't just, just play, you can't just focus on the opposition, you can't just focus on yourself. You need a bit of a mixture. But you need to understand what we're trying to achieve as a team. Um, you know, game styles, how things go. Josh Kenny potentially back, but Jamie Cripps also a chance. Maybe he'd be back a little bit early. What would he add yeah. to both those veteran preferences? Yeah, well, um, as again, you know, Josh is an excellent player, and then same as Jamie Cripps. So uh, been playing the forward line now for five years and plays a really good role for us. He's you know got great speed, and endurance, um, understands about the game, helps set up, and he can kick a few goals. So to have another player like him would be fantastic when he's back in the team. I don't think he'll play this week, but um, you know he's certainly ahead of schedule. So I think he'd be, you know, two, three, four weeks somewhere along there. Uh, no, they're still trying to work that work out exactly how long it's going to be. So um, just got a little problem with his foot. So hopefully it's not too long, but we'll have to wait and see.